you're asking why don't we have machines that can see ordinary things flashing out of existence since all the particles are flashing out of existence why can't we develop machines that see all the stuff made of the particles flashing out of existence so if a pumpkin is flashing is made of flashing particles why can't we detect the pumpkin flashing and the answer to that that's a very sophisticated question the answer to it is that uh, the camera is made of quantum particles and it will only exist at those moments uh, you know when there's uh, it can't exist in the gaps so to speak they're not real gaps but that's what we think of them as you know because we think of time as linearly like one moment after another, after another one existing at a time so it's not really gaps because gap implies you know between two things that are there when there's only one moment of time but the gaps are basically uh, non-being there, there, there is no such thing um, they're nothingness which is not a real thing we can talk about so the camera will only exist at the when all the atoms do which is the points of existence you know the, uh, the moments of time which are moments of existence and uh, so it'll only be able to pick up being made of atoms it'll only be able to pick up uh, stuff during the times of uh, you know during uh, you know in the moments not in gaps which where the cameras atoms don't exist so all the camera can pick up would be still moments uh, you know so it'll be able to pick up the moments and show that they're still if the camera is fast enough uh, taking pictures um, but I want to pick you know to say that the camera exists you know to see the flashing it would be like to say the camera doesn't flash it continues to exist while the thing, other things are flashing and therefore we can see quote unquote between the uh, moments of existence we can see the you know, we can see the uh, the difference between between moments. We can see the gaps between uh, in time between moments, uh, and that uh, uh, that's the, uh, not how the camera works because it itself is made up of atoms. So nothing can. There is no percep perceiving creature, to my knowledge, that can see the uh, uh, in between moments because all the creatures are made of atoms and uh, the, uh, so they only exist at the, uh, at the moments, not between moments. And secondly, you might say, well, the mind isn't necessarily made of atoms. Uh, what if we adopt a position where the mind is non-physical? And uh, in that case, um, you know, it maybe it, it could be something that continues to exist uh, between... You know, it's, it's, maybe it's got a, a non-flashing aspect, so it's got uh, endurance or uh, continuity to it. So it can sit back and watch the flashing happen. Uh, now, th that would be a much better... I think that's what you're trying to do by saying the... You know, can there be a device that can measure and uh, pick up on the, the flashing? The only device I know that can do that is something not made of atoms, something outside of uh, physical nature. Or, in other words, not part of physical nature, maybe within and coinciding with the physical realm, but not made of the physical stuff. That uh, the only the only candidate I would know of is consciousness. But it's you know really all those flashing rules that that the problem of change led us to, where reality is flashing out of existence at a, uh, you know uh, maybe infinite times every instant, even or sorry every uh, for any duration. Uh, it just depends if the uh, moments of time are point atoms of time they have no they're atoms of time they have no duration or if they're uh if they have a small duration like uh, 10 to the negative 43 seconds say you know the Planck scale for example you know but i mean you can see the mind is affected by the problem of change equally i mean think think of your mind here now it's look at my, look at my look at this pencil here uh and now the pencil i'm putting behind my back so you've got two states of consciousness two st based on two states of perception seeing pencil and pencil not being perceived so your mind just changed your state of consciousness just changed so your mind has state certain impressions certain perceptions at one moment and then at the next you know some later moment they're not there so it's changing in the same way so the, if it's and if it's changing the problem of change is there uh so it seems like the mind is uh flashing just like uh, uh anything in the physical cosmos is which is made of uh the quantum energy points or in other words quantum atom you know the uh, uh basic building blocks or subatomic particles so it seems like but but then again the mind is going beyond physical laws if that is if and only if it's 
uh, not something composed of subatomic particles. So, uh, is there some magical, I mean, does that mean it could be a magical entity, you know, sort of analogous to Anaximander's Apiron? I guess. I don't know. Um, but it, I guess we can't rule that out. If we, if, if our, if our science and our philosophy is uh, based on an empirical world, and the mind is something that's not empirical, so it's of another another dimension than the empirical. If that's all the case, I guess we can't rule rule out saying the mind is is magic, is, is a magical entity. I mean, it goes beyond the laws of of logic and physics. I mean, it would seem, you know, that it's still, regardless of what dimension it's in or what its nature, it's still going to obey, obey the laws of logic. It would seem that's the case, but unless we can verify that. You know, we have to see the consciousness to be able to do that. So unless we can verify that, we really can't say yes or no. So we might have to go the Annex Amanda sort of route and say, uh, oh, maybe the mind is uh, a magical entity. Maybe there's reasons to say that it's uh, a magical entity. You know, somehow it can have different impressions at different times, but uh, nevertheless uh, be something that... Uh, doesn't flash in and out of existence. So it changes without the problem of change happening. And that, you know, good luck arguing that one. That's a toughie. <laughs> the problem of change seems pretty straightforward. So, anyways, uh, what else you got? You want, you want to talk about something more to do with this? Hang on, let's go, uh, let's go over uh, in my office and talk about this. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. But, um, name never mentioned, so just talk. Ha when it, how come you can see the quantum particles under the microscope when they flash? In and out of existence. Okay. Yeah. How can you? Yeah. I mean, with our that's general. a good question. Um, presumably, what we're seeing then under the microscope, or the you know the microscopic equipment, mm -hmm. <coughs> is you're getting, you're seeing a particle do something here at some moment, say this moment, yeah. and then then later you pick up what it's doing later at some other moment. So it it would have to be the case that you're not seeing every instant. Okay, oh. because then you'd be you'd be taking information about every single moment. But mm -hmm. what quantum machinery is doing <clears throat> is just taking information about you know. Oh, now we got a snapshot. Then a billionth of a second later, now we got another snapshot. Billionth of a second later, now we got another snapshot, and so forth. So what? Now it's not completely empirical of why they say. Part of that flashing out of existence. Part of it is because of the uncertainty principle, which is in the notes, but we didn't get to cover. Because the uncertainty principle predicts that the um, that you know the whole bullet thing, where the bullet is mm -hmm. still, that's the uncertainty principle. Um, that if you can look at something at a, the most precise location, in mm -hmm. other words, without being smeared like a bullet being smeared, if you can see it at its most precise location, in other words, where it's the shortest amount of time, mm -hmm. it's still. Um, so. So that, that means that each instant of the bullet is stillness, so it has to be flashing in and out of existence. Now, so that so when you're seeing a particle in the quantum lab mm -hmm. flashing in and out of existence, you're not exactly seeing every instant of the flashing. Then you'd have because mm -hmm. what they would see all of a sudden is perhaps infinite data points. Let's say they're say they're measuring the position of the particle mm -hmm. that they're you know wherever it is in the atom, and if they measured every single flashing instant. And from any moment of time, no matter how short, like from here to here, mm -hmm. they're going to have an infinite set of data points because there could be an infinite set of flashing moments. Right. So, so they're just taking bits and pieces here and there. So we don't really know much about even quantum physics. To do no, no, we we it, the quantum particles exhibit the bullet-like activity yeah. where they look still and then still, and you can't predict where they go. It's not like, oh, now it's flowing around. No, all of a sudden it's here. And then we find it here, and it was impossible to predict. That it's like it's popping in and out of existence at each place. Um, but as far as uh, uh, seeing exactly what quantum particles are doing, nobody... If we could see more, maybe we'd find out they're not flashing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we'd find out... I, I think, personally, we will. The glowing bullet illustration seems to point out how... Um, you can you might have to see if you want. Um, the glowing bullet example, that's the basis of... Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in quantum physics, which seems to show that everything exists. W existence is made up of entities that have stillness, that c are comprised of still moments. Uh, and if that's the case, things, everything's flashed on in and out of existence. 
it's kind of, you know, yeah. you're going way above what we talked about in class, which is good. Yeah. You want to do that. Um, but, I mean, if you've got things down this well, you, you're getting the information down sufficiently for the class, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I just... You're asking good questions. Because I, like, I looked on the Internet, and I couldn't really find, like, a definition about, like, quantum particles or anything. And that's, that's They're just confused me. irreducible... Well, the, the ones that are atoms that don't have yeah. parts, they're irreducible pieces of existence. Irreducible pieces of base energy, sometimes is the phrase that's used. And what that means is just, you know, whatever reality is, the smallest pieces of it are the quantum atoms. And then some of them are kind of work together in groups, mm -hmm. like an at, like the scientist atom with the nucleus and stuff. Yeah. So they're not really, they kind of just are always together. You know, we don't see how they're, there's like strings connecting them or something. So they're kind of always placed together. So we call those, Composites, you know, <laughs> some of them have parts. Like the quantum, the physicist atom has parts. Yeah. Something. So. All right. Cool. Yeah, cool. And then for the thing today, for mm -hmm. just see if this line of argument makes sense for occasionalism. Um. Occasionalism on your test, as I, uh, you're probably not surprised about. <laughs> so if you say that. Um, for occasionalism, with everything flashing in and out of existence, which is a part of occasionalism, and then if it's n so it's new every time. Yep. And if it's new every time, but the same thing happens as with like you know you push that door at the same place with the same force, the door closes every time. So then how can it be new? And it, if it, that in cases because it doesn't look like it's new. Yeah. Right. If it's not new then the God can't be constantly creating it continuously, mm -hmm. so then it, you, the occasionalism, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, good question. Okay, the idea that everything's new, that's an idea that shows up in philosophy. Like, Heraclitus is one of the first we saw, but then all the way up to, like, the present day, there's been philosophers doing it. There's a philosopher named Giles Deleuze. From, he's a French philosopher, really famous. He talks about everything's always new. His novelty is what makes up everything. Now, the only way you can know that everything is, if, you, if you're in the natural person, speaking mm -hmm. from the Eastern philosophy perspective, if you're in the natural person state, everything doesn't look new. Everything looks stale and old. Yeah. Okay? Which, in that, nothing else seems to make any sense except that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways to determine that everything's new. One is with quantum physics, the glowing bullet, yeah. logically, or perhaps empirically with uh, quantum experimentation. There you see that everything's popping in and out of existence. It seems like mm -hmm. it, both through logic and experimentation seems to show that as well. So if everything's popping in and out of existence and the old state of it doesn't exist anymore, the new state really exists, everything is newness. And if everything is made of quantum particles, everything has those properties of newness, whether we see them or not. You can see it in the lab. And if you can't see it in the stuff, that you're looking at the lab that makes up everything, well, it's a perception problem. Yeah. The other way to see newness is Buddhist, uh, Eastern philosophers, in meditation, when they look at reality, they can see... They Remember when the, we read a quote by the Buddha that said everything is made of bubbling froth? Yeah. Um, and what he means, that's the effervescence, like bubbling, blah, 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 everything popping up. Yeah. That's a theme that's used by Buddhists for, you know, has been used for centuries by them. And what it means is that uh, everything, Buddhists are flashing atoms people. They hold this philosophy, especially in Tibetan Buddhism and Indian Buddhism. And what they say is the same thing that quantum physicists do, that everything is popping into existence and the old states of it don't exist anymore. And everything's mm -hmm. new states of, new, not new states of, new, ato new atoms exist at every instant. And they say they can see it. They say they can see it, not with their physical eyes, they can see it with their mind's eye, which is all we're seeing with anyways. Yeah. And what they'll say is that, I can't explain it to you, but I can see, quote unquote see, an energy field everywhere that has uh, little pieces of point energy, little pieces of light flicking in and out of existence, mm -hmm. and every time they flick into existence, they're new. So I can feel newness everywhere. That's what Buddhist philosophers, if I can sum up like a whole 2,500 year tradition, that's what they'll say, roughly. It's kind of like um, a lot of the stuff, you know, Yoda says. You know, everything, you know, you can't see the force, you feel the force. You know how in Star Wars they always talk about, like, there's two ways to, I mean, you can know things with your eyes. You can know things by thinking up theories about them. But you can also know things by feeling things. And that's in Eastern philosophy, feeling existence is what they're really leaning for. There's a whole, like, different mode of knowing about stuff. But does that line of argument still 